Hey there, Angie M. Thought we'd do some swatches. I did pick up these palettes from Alter Ego. I had actually put in my email for when this guy came back into stock. I bumped my desk before I started filming. So this is kind of moving around. Get something off my head here. All right. So I did pick up the Goddess palette, which I was super excited about. This is a dupe for the, the, the Natasha Denona gold palette and then Canyon, which is a dupe for the Natasha Denona bronze palette. Really like this as well. I did not want to purchase it from Natasha Denona because of cost. Same thing with the Goddess palette. The Goddess palette is $129. I do believe that the new bronze palette was actually less. So there's the bronze palette. And then here is the gold palette. I really, really, really like these. There are shadows in here that I am super excited about. Shadows that are dupes for things that I already have, I'm sure, but at $16 a piece, I just, I couldn't resist. I'm just getting some stuff out of the way here. And then I figured we could swatch. We'll start with the goddess palette. I have previously swatched these just because I could not help myself. This Artemis shade is just delightful. I think what I'm going to do is, I know I'm going to need two wipes. I'm going to pull out two wipes right now. Let's do the shimmers first and then go from there. So shimmery, glittery, So Artemis, that is just so special and so beautiful. Pandora, these two are a little bit chunkier, a little bit glitterier, very beautiful. Lysa, I love a good metallic and that is a beautiful golden metallic, almost to a penny shade, but not quite. And then Aura which I, I love Aura. I love how that looks. I love how it feels. It is incredibly fabulous. Wait for my fingers to dry a little bit here before I grab the next four. Five. All right, so then we have Valkyrie. Very, very beautiful. Venus. Venus, I'm pretty sure I could probably get a close dupe out of the Metropolis palette, but in all honesty, I like the formula of Venus better because it's more of a metallic than a glitter. Freya. It looks a little chalky. It reminds me of an adept shade that I have. It is very much a topper. Quite beautiful though, no shade to it. And then Luna, which, sorry, my pinkies do not lend themselves to the best swatches, which is more, oh, hold on, look at, look, at, look at here. It is very similar to Lysa, but not quite the same. Some of them do look the same. It's it's a thing on the eye. Sometimes with a brush and sheared out, they can look different. Sometimes they look like, you know, they're duping themselves. That's fine. So I'm gonna hit the last one. Cassandra, I love this duochrome. And then I'll get to the mattes. The mattes I think are the most dupe-like. So here is Cassandra. Doesn't swatch the greatest, but it is beautiful duochrome toppery. And then we have the matte Athena, Iris, I'm running out of room here. And then we'll just go up here, Hera. Hera. I love the naming on this palette. I love the naming on both of these palettes. I don't know that I would necessarily call the gold palette a gold palette to me, but hey, whatever. So Hera, Gaia, Juno, and Avalon, Gaia, which is very pretty, could potentially stain your eyelids, Juno, and then Avalon. 
I feel like some of these I could actually dupe from palettes that I already own, smaller palettes and my Metropolis palette. But uh, I'm excited to get to play with these. I do feel like Gaia is a little bit different from what is in the Metropolis palette. In terms of the Goddess palette, I did keep the packaging because there's information on the packaging that I wanted. So this guy gives a 12 month life expectancy. Cruelty free, always a good thing. I do not see any warnings about, you know, non eye safe. Here in the United States, the FDA is actually behind on things. So things that are considered eye safe in other countries might not be considered eye safe in the United States. A lot of times what it means is it could contain an irritant potentially that could get into your eye or that it's a pressed pigment. I don't know that this is a pressed pigment. I'm going to assume no because this is called an eyeshadow palette. I don't see a warning about that. I do see that it, some things may contain bismuth oxychloride, which can be an irritant for some people, but a pigment can also potentially stain your eyes. I use a primer, so I generally don't have a problem with that, but there is a V Goddess palette. All right, I'm just gonna clean my arm up here really quick. I really, I really love this. Now I'm just doing these swatches with my finger. I'm not doing them with a brush. There's no primer or anything down. So you guys are getting a really rough one there. And then I believe I saw the Canyon palette. I believe I saw Aunt Angela Bright's channel talking about this. And that is how I knew that this had come out Canyon and saw that Goddess was back in stock. All right, so now my arm is dry. I'm just gonna move this up. I love this Desert Moon Shade. I did use it on the outer corner of my eye with rust and then a little bit of rattlesnake the other day. It was not, it didn't have the impact that rust does. Full disclosure, for a bronzy palette, the only shade in here that I actually consider bronze is rust. So my idea of bronze is different than I think a lot of others ideas of bronze. Now bronze runs a spectrum. It can it can be a number of different colors. But I just again I like I like to be honest, this to me isn't representative of a bronze palette. So I love I love that Alter Ego has called it Canyon because to me this is a very earthy palette and it does remind me of the Grand Canyon both day and night. So I personally like their naming better than Natasha Denona's naming on her palette. Uh, let's grab some shimmers to start with. So we got Plateau. This is beautiful. I don't know. It sort of has a duochrome effect. I don't know that I would actually call it. I don't know that it actually is meant to be a duochrome, but it has a duochrome-like effect because of the shimmers in it. Scorch, so something like this, I feel like I could dupe from the Metropolis palette. Same thing with Cliff, which is, ooh, out of order, out of order, out of order. I feel like I can dupe those. Sear, I could probably dupe as well as Coyote and Blaze. I just feel like they're very similar. So here is Plateau. Look at that, it's very beautiful. And then I've got Scorch. I like the formula in here a little bit better because they're less chunky, less glittery. And then we've got Blaze and then Cliff. So these are much more penny colored. Maybe I'd consider this goldy, but I mean, we're, we're definitely leaning coppery. I think in a lot of these more than we're leaning bronze. Now, bronze can be a mixture of alloys. Again, it, run, it can run the gamut of colors. For a bronze palette, I would have liked to have seen maybe some greens because bronze can patina and have that a little bit of greenness to it. Oh, and I just kind of wiped my arm on my pants. So these are a little smudged now. All right, so we stopped at Cliff. Cougar is quite beautiful. Sear, Coyote, Rust. So Cougar it up. Cougar is kind of, it reminds me of kind of more of a topper type shade. Sear also, in comparison to some of the other ones, I was surprised by how 
how sear I kind of feel like I have to build it up to kind of get the effect of the others. I'm just looking at it. It's a much more subtle shade, even though it feels like it's got the same texture of more of the metallics, metallics or shimmeries. I really can't talk today. And then we've got Coyote. Also, Coyote kind of swatches. It looks very intense in the pan, but it swatches like a topper, which could could be what they want here. I mean, this could be more of a topper palette. It definitely feels more, more topper-ish. Cougar also has a topper-ish feel to it. And then Rust, I really, really like this shade. Again, that's my pinky. My pinky never does a great job. Never does it justice. But I mean, build that up and that is just gorgeous here for Bear Shakes. I'm gonna grab Coyote again and just build that up a little bit. Again, that they are, some of these are very topper-like to me. They're not the impact that you get for, for standalones, which isn't, isn't a bad thing. It's just a different kind of feel. Ooh, sorry about that. And then we'll hit the desert moon and go into the mats. So desert moon, I mean, that that is just a delicious duochrome. Mule, desert sun, expanse. In the pan, expanse almost looks like it's meant to be more of a metallic, but it's it's not, or a shimmer. It's, it's definitely a matte. There might be some sparkle to it because sometimes that helps with, with blending. All right, so moving along, Desert Moon. I love this. It looks very, it looks like it's gonna be very impactful here, but it's, you gotta really build it up. Again, it's more of a topper, more of a subtle shade. And then we've got the matte mule. That one's, that one picks up a lot on my finger, which is why I'm going back over it. Really smooth, desert, desert sun, expanse. Expanse actually, like I feel like I'm being unfair here, but I, I'm really surprised this one doesn't pick up very well and it actually stains my finger. I ran into this with my Natasha Denona Mini Nude Palette where the formula of the deepest brown shade in that does something similar where it doesn't blend either, where you place it is where you place it. So I wonder if this formula for at least that particular shade is comparable to that Natasha Denona formula. Not my favorite formula. <laughs> Just because ease of use is a little is a little bit less on that. But the other one, the other ones so far are just as beautiful as, as other shades that I do like. All right, so let's grab Russet, Earth, and Rattlesnake. I've used Rattlesnake, I really like that. I also really like the Earth shade. Russet. See how Russet looked more powdery as I, as I swatched it out? And then Earth. Earth is very nice and Rattlesnake is very nice. Rattlesnake is more of a muted version of Earth. I really like those. I like shades in here. I don't know how much I like more of the reddish shades. It's just not my jam entirely. They're not the, they're not the right tone that I look for. They're cooler than I like. They're not cool, but they're cooler than I, I personally prefer. So I'm just gonna clean this up really quick. And then we'll talk about the packaging because the packaging was a little bit different on the Canyon palette. Ooh, just wiping makeup off here. And this expand shade stained my arm a little bit. So I don't know if you can see it anymore, but when I pull out from the camera, I can see it just a little bit as well. All right, so according to the packaging, so this is the Canyon packaging. Again, very beautiful packaging. I really, really like the work that they did here. So this is called a pressed, sorry, get it in frame, Angela, get it in frame. A pressed powder palette, not an eyeshadow palette. It does have the warning not intended for use in the immediate eye area. That asterisk lines up with something in the formulas up here. So like expanse 
expanse here is noted. And again, like I said, that formula is different. This I would say is a pressed pigment. I don't know if the problem that I have with it, whether it's here in this palette or in the actual Natasha Denona palette that I have, I don't know if the problem with it is that as a pressed pigment, maybe they're too firmly pressed to keep them in the pan. I don't know. They're Again, they're not my favorite formula, but I love other formulas in here. And honestly, $16 a palette, I feel, I feel like Alter Ego just blows it out of the water in terms of formula. I feel like they do such a beautiful job. It's still cruelty-free, but I don't notice a use-by date on here either. And I do see bismuth oxychloride is in some of is in or maybe in some of the shades. So just something to watch out for if you have a bismuth oxychloride sensitivity. I do know that I can have sensitivity. Um, when I used Rattlesnake, Rust, and Desert Moon, I did have some eye irritation, but for me it goes away pretty quickly. So it's like I'll have it right away and then it disappears. I get the same problem with an actual Natasha Denona palette too, only that usually lasts longer. So if I'm really honest, Alter Ego just does it better for me. You know, and, and that's a thing. It is what it is. So, so let, me, let me just open these guys up so we can talk about them jointly. Do I feel like, here, here, we'll just turn it like this. Do I feel like I could even dupe things out of here for each other? Yes. Do I have other things in? Wow, I, I just got, there's stuff everywhere. Do, do I feel like there are other things in my collection that could dupe some of this? Yes. Are there things that I couldn't dupe in my collection? Yes. Now, I'm actually okay with all of these. Do I think if I really love this, that I would want to try the actual Natasha Denona palette? I don't know. I say, I say that and I mean it. I really don't know that it would be worth the price point to me. And that's part of the reason I don't have the gold palette is I just feel like I really like the colors. There's a lot of it I could dupe out. And I think that at that price point, it's just not something that I would want to purchase. Conspiracy theory, personal opinion, no facts to back it up whatsoever. I have a tendency to feel like there is a reason that Alter Ego can dupe out entire Natasha Denona palettes without problem. I am surprised that Natasha Denona doesn't take issue with that. I'm glad they don't. I like these more affordable alternatives. So there's a part of me that thinks maybe there's some, some consent going on here to get these palettes. I know some people have very strong thoughts about dupe palettes. Me personally, it's, it's not like we're duping an e.l.f. palette and charging more. You know what I mean? So when we're duping something that's super expensive, super high end, I'm, I'm actually not bothered by that because there are a lot of people who aren't going to be able to afford a more expensive palette. And I like, I like this alternative and I feel like it's quality. I don't feel like it's crap that's being produced either. So I am okay with it. You guys are going to see this in some get ready with me videos. And we are going to go from there. I really love that Valkyrie color as well. Like I love everything in the gold palette, not the gold palette, in the goddess palette which is probably why I love the gold palette so much because I love the, this is like my jam right here. I mean, this, this is my wheelhouse. I also like the bronzes. So like rust, I would like to see in this palette, like maybe Luna could be swapped out for rust kind of situation. You know what I mean? I also feel like there is some maybe duping that happens here. Iris, Hera, Juno, Rattlesnake. I think Earth might be a little too warm, would definitely be potential dupes for each other. Athena, I have something very similar from Adept in a single. I feel like Rust, I might be able to dupe out from them as well, but I feel like the formula is different enough that it's actually a very different shadow. Again, I'm going to play with this, see where it goes. You guys are going to see me play with it. I like these. I like that I didn't have to, you know, spend a huge amount of money on them. I really appreciate, again, that they are out there as alternatives. I am not bothered by that because I think if I really love the Goddess palette and want to get the Natasha Denona palette, that is still an option that's available to me. It's not like this is cutting me off from that. 
if I use this and decide I've moved on from this color story, then no harm, no foul, because I, if this wasn't available, I wouldn't have purchased the gold palette anyway. So, <laughs> so it's not, it's not like I'm take, taking something away from Natasha Denona because I wasn't going to buy a $129 palette anyway. So is what it is. Again, we're going to use these. We're going to play with these. We're going to see where we can go. I can definitely see, and I love the layout because I can see color stories as I look at this. Rattlesnake, Rust, Cougar, Desert Moon. Desert Moon, Seer, Expanse, Cougar. Desert Sun, Plateau, Scorch, Cliff. Right? Earth, Blaze, Mule, Russet. Earth, Coyote, Rattlesnake, Russet. You know, Coyote, Rattlesnake, Rust, Cliff. I, the way this works to me into my brain, I look at it and I can see so many different variations of color stories. You know, something something fun. Gaia, Venus. You know, Gaia, Cassandra, Avalon. Luna and Valkyrie together could look really cool done right, I think. I feel like... In Canyon, I see more color stories visually than I do when I look at the Goddess palette, but I think it has to do with the variations that are in Canyon where there's a lot more similarity in Goddess. But some people don't always see that, so I just, I like to see particularly in the layout of Canyon that you can see where there's an intention for things to go together whether it's in the column itself, in the row, or in a mixture, whether it's quads, because you can see, I can see quadded out stories that could go together, or in the four, that was immediately how I saw st stories that could go together. So that is, that is really what we're looking for when we're trying to, to figure out how we're gonna use a palette. I have in the past been intimidated by some of these more bolder shades, but I have started using them and actually found that I really like and enjoy them. I like how they look on my eyes, so I'm excited to get to play with, play with them here as well. And with that, I am going to leave you guys, and I will catch y'all in the next one. Have a fabulous day, as always.